Hi, this is Sung, and I'm the Principal and Director of Sky Academy, and in the last episode we looked at growth and decay, alright, and we worked out the growth and decay, the way that we find it in nature, in reality, in this world around us, is, is usually of an exponential nature. Growth and decay, because growth and decay follows this, the rate at which something is growing or decaying will be proportional to the amount of that quantity that we have at that particular point in time, okay? And that is why growth and decay will be exponential, because only in an exponential will a derivative be exproportional to the derivative of a function be proportional to the function itself. And so where you've got the, the rate of change of n over t, so dn over dt, the growth and decay formula would suggest that it's proportional to the amount of quantity that we have, which makes it exponential, all right? So whenever you see something like that, you can take the next step and say that the formula for n will look something like this. A, some initial value A, times E to the power of a constant times time, okay? So basically what you've got is this formula being a derivative, all right? So what's actually the integral, the integral of this function, all right? This function being the derivative of this function, all right? And, um, and this function being the integral of that function, okay? Um, they don't look similar, but they are, okay? They don't look similar, so they are. But what you can do is, is when you see this, you can automatically assume this, and when you see this, you can automatically assume that. Does that make sense? All right, so this function is basically where n is the quantity that you have at any given moment in time, a is your initial quantity, k is your growth and decay constant, all right? Um, that will give you, um, for any given time, the amount of quantity that you have, right? So those two functions are the ones that you need to remember. And we're going to apply that to two specific questions that I have here. Hopefully you can read it. I've kind of squashed it up on the board. And if you can do these two examples, you, you're pretty much set in terms of doing any sort of growth and decay type questions within the two unit course. Um, in the extension one course, we do extend our knowledge of growth and decay beyond what we have in the two unit course, but if you're just doing the two unit course, this episode will be sufficient for you. Okay, so let's have a look at how you might approach this particular question. Okay, so for example, the charge Q units on a hot plate um, after T seconds after it starts to discharge is given by this formula, Q equals to A to the, uh, times E to the minus KT. See how it follows? that, see how it mirror images that? You might use different letters, but what you're looking for is the same form, okay? So in this case, N is different to Q, right? A, they use the same letter for A, but even if they use a different letter, you need to be able to recognize that it's a growth and decay formula, okay? So it says, if the original charge is 5,000, find A. Well, that's pretty easy. A is always going to be the initial quantity, and the original charge is 5,000, so that's going to be our A, all right? But this is how we work it out. So we basically say your quantity is equal to 5,000 when T is equal to zero, all right? And that's for part A, right? So let's work this out. So you've got Q is equal to A, e to the minus kt, all right, which is basically 5,000 equals to a, e to the minus k times zero. Does that make sense? Now, zero times k is zero, e to the power of zero is one, therefore, a is equal to 5,000. We've done the first part of the question, all right? Let's do part B now, that's part A. Part B says, if dq is equal to minus 2000 for q is equal to 1000, find k. So we know that the original function looks like this. Um, q 
is equal to, we worked out what A is, so it's 5,000 E to the minus K T. Does that make sense? Good. So now we need to work out what DQ is. DQ DT is going to be equal to the differential of that. So let's work that out. So let's differentiate this. So we've got 5,000 E to the minus KT times minus K. Does that make sense? All right. All right. And we want when Q is equal to 1,000, we've got to work out what K is. Well, we're told, all right, that Q is equal to 1,000, and we, we are told that DQ, DT, is equal to minus 2,000. Does that make sense? And we need to work out what K is equal to. Yes? So that, they're the information, that's the information that we have to do part B. Now, what I want you to notice is that all of this is equal to Q. Yes? So what we've got is minus KQ. Got that? Now, DQ, DT is equal to minus 2,000. So that goes there. Times minus K and Q is equal to 1,000. Yes? So K will be equal to minus 2. Do you see that? Good. And, sorry, hang on, let me just write that down. Minus 2. The last question says, find the rate of discharge when Q equals to 5,000. All right, so basically, the rate of discharge will be equal to, all right, so what's DQ equal to? DQ DT is going to be equal to minus KQ. Remember we worked that out? DQ DT is equal to minus KQ, all right? Now, what we told is Q equals to 5,000 in this question, and we worked out that K is equal to minus two, yes? So, what we can do is we can say DQ DT, which represents the rate of discharge, is equal to minus, all right, sorry, K is going to be equal to positive 2, all right? Because you've got a negative there and a negative there. So minus 2 times 5,000. So your rate of discharge is minus 10,000 units per second. Does that make sense? And that's how you do that question, right? And I suppose we should write units for this one here as well. Good. Now, what I want you to see from this is basically, all we need to do is recognize that this is exponential. The rest of it is just about substituting into the formula to find your unknowns, all right? There's nothing too complicated about the maths if you understand how to work with, um, with exponential equations, okay? So there's nothing too hard about the maths. It's about trying to apply the facts of the problem to the maths that we've already been doing. Does that make sense? So that's what we've got to be able to get used to. Now, this time I'm going to do this question here, and this question is going to be slightly different, okay? Because this time, um, we're given the rate of change, and we've got to work out the formula to get the quantity. All right, so let's, let's, let's read the question, okay? Just so that you understand what I'm talking about, so we're on the same page. 
Here, we're told that the rate of increase in N, which is bacteria, is given by dN over dt equals to 0.5N. Got that? Where T is time in hours. All right? So in other words, you've got N and T. They're your two variables that, um, that are linked. And it's the rate of change of N bacteria in T hours. All right? And that's 0.5N. All right. And when you see this, you should automatically go from that equation to this equation. You should automatically go from there to there. So in other words, N is equal to A E to the K T. Right? So that should automatically lead you there. Okay? Does that make sense? Alright, so now Let's look at the first question. If there are originally a thousand bacteria, find an expression of N in terms of T. So initially there's a thousand bacteria, so that number there is going to be what? What does that A represent? It represents the initial quantity. But the way that you can work that out for good is you basically say T equals to zero N equals to 1,000, so A equals to what, right? And you've got this formula here, N equals to A E to the K T, which gives you 1,000 is equal to A lots of E to the K times 0, so A will be equal to a thousand, okay? So find an expression of N in terms of T. N will be equal to a thousand, yep, lots of E to the K T. The next thing you have to work out is what K is equal to. Now, K will be equal to that number there, the 0 0.15, right? So what I would do is basically differentiate that, all right? Differentiate that. So dN dt is equal to k outside of 1000 e to the kt, which is equal to k lots of, um, and then that is equal to n. But what you can see is that dN dt is equal to 0 0.15, whoops, 0 0.15 n, therefore k is equal to 0 0.15. So this, so basically, so working with this equation, n is going to be 1000 e to the 0 0.15 t. Do you see what we've done? We've put this into this equation there. All right. Now, the expression for n would then be n is equal to 1,000 lots of e to the 0 0.15t. All right. Now, part b says, how long does it take for the original bacteria to double and what is its rate of growth? All right. So we, what we want is we want what t is when n equals to 2,000 because we want when the original bacteria doubles. And the original bacteria was 1,000, we want when it's 2,000, right? So basically what we've got is 2,000 equals to 1,000 e to the 0 0.15 t. Got it? Divide both sides by 1,000, which leaves you with 2 equals to e to the 0 0.15 t, right? 
let me come up here. Now, I would rearrange all of this into logarithmic form so that 0.15t is equal to log e2. So t, the amount of hours that it takes for the uh, for the bacteria colony to double would be log e2 divided by 0 0.15. Now, what I would do then is put that into the calculator, right? And that will give us how many hours it will take, right? So let me just get my calculator now. Alright, so punch that into the calculator and of course there's no log E button. It'll be an LN button, okay? So let me just type that in. LN2 equals to that divided by 0 0.15 equals to, and I got 4.621 hours, right? If I wanted to turn that into hours, minutes, um, and seconds, what I can do is pr press the degrees, minutes, and seconds button on my calculator, and that gives me 4 hours, 37 minutes, and 16 seconds, all right? And that's pretty precise, okay, for the colony to double. Okay, so I'll just put a box around that and a box around that. And that is how you do um, exponential growth and decay type questions. Now, like I said, all right, it took a while to do this and it seemed pretty difficult, but I want to stress that none of the maths is new, but what is new is being able to apply the mathematics that you know to the, to the specific problems that you get, okay? What it will require you to do is, going, is for you to go away, practice this stuff, and hopefully you can get really good at it. I'm going to stand to the side now so that you can take in all the working out, but I just want to thank you for watching and being patient in trying to understand this stuff. Thanks again.